Today we're going to talk a little bit more about the guitar. Um, I actually got it professionally set up by a luthier and um, wanted to talk a little bit about the construction of these guitars and um, the quality. So, um, uh, Also I decided to uh, record a video in some place other than my laundry room. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so it's a little bit of a change of scenery. So. Okay, so um, you may recall from my video about the bridge saddles, I was talking about how they kind of tilt down at sort of a sickly angle, um, and I uh, took it actually to Guitar Center first just because I wanted to kind of see um, what they would do with it, and it was more convenient to my house, so I uh, took it there, and I was actually kind of surprised because the tech that looked at it was like, Oh no, this guitar is perfect. If it was me, I would actually raise the action a little bit. And I was like, okay, that's kind of curious. Um, because it had a lot of issues. It, you know, some of the notes were choked. You know, they didn't necessarily buzz, but you had to raise the strings a fair amount to keep it from choking out on bends. So, um, yeah. So, when he told me, you know, to take it back home, <laughs> I was a little bit surprised. Plus... It was funny because I thought maybe there were a couple high frets, and um, the guy told me that it was either sixty bucks for a full for a regular setup, you know, set and adjust, intonation, all that, or a hundred and forty for fret leveling, because they couldn't just do one fret; uh, they had to do the whole thing. Um, so, someone else made the suggestion to me recently that maybe they don't actually do the work in house. Uh, that it might be that uh, for anything beyond basic setups, they probably send it out to a different luthier. So if you're going to take your guitar to a shop, I think it's probably important just so you know that you ask, hey, do you ever send any work out? You know, just ask them like that so that that way, you know, there's no uh, room for hemming and hawing over it. Just ask them if they ever send anything out for any reason. Um, and then that way you might get a straight answer. Uh, someone else I know with the same guitar uh, paid a lot of money to have his pickguard cut by a guitar shop um, along with the setup, and it ended up taking over a month. And then it turned out that the reason it was taking so long is because, you guessed it, they shipped the pickguard out to be cut by a CNC router company, you know, like a sign shop or something. So I definitely think you should ask, um, unless you just don't care. <laughs> There's that. But, uh, yeah, I would ask and just see if they send anything out to any place else because that's a, I think that's good information to know. Now, um, I ended up taking it, after being sent away by Guitar Center, I ended up taking it to a good music store uh, that's been in my area for at least 30 years um, with great techs. And they looked at it. And it was funny because the other guy, he played with it and fiddled with it and pulled out rulers and... And was like, you know, it's fine after 10 minutes. And then um, these guys, they looked at it. They, you know, fretted the high frets and the low frets. And they're like, oh, yeah, it needs a neck shim. Now, I kind of felt that way already, but I was kind of afraid to do it because um, there's different schools of thought on neck shims. I checked with them, and what they did was a full pocket hardwood neck shim. Uh, so it actually runs literally the full length of the pocket. Um, if you look on the other side of the guitar, rather than having a piece of wood sticking out, there's just maybe a minor gap, which, you know, I think looks better than having, you know, a piece of stuff sticking out of there, so I don't have any issue with that whatsoever, but, um, clonk, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> anyway, um, so they put a neck shim in it, and they, and they identified the problem immediately, they're like, oh yeah, you see how your saddles, you know, lean like that, that's because it's the angle of the neck, which had crossed my mind, but like I said, 
I was I didn't want to mess with it because apparently you know some folks uh, use like business cards or a piece of credit card or something small. And I read this article on Premier Guitar where they're talking about how using a, a shim that's smaller than the, the full neck pocket makes it so that the neck can actually be damaged because if you have that shim in there, you know, for half the pocket and the wood's pressing up against it, eventually it's going to indent into the wood and actually make an impression in it. So, um, you know, they, they're talking about how it leads to problems and that sort of thing. But I'll just post the link to the article so you can read it yourself and you can learn about how to make full pocket neck shims. I think it requires it requires a belt sander. It's like some, some stuff that I don't have. But um, it's good info to know. And honestly, that's the thing is if you're uh, if you saw the way this, the saddles look before, uh, remember I, I was talking about how they look like little jack, jacked up hot rods. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> and that was the picture that I showed, or the, the video that I showed was after I had widened the holes in the bridge saddle so that they angled even less, and they were still jacked up. But if you look at it now, they're nice and flat. So, that's a big difference. And you also notice that the, uh, the saddles are radius to the fretboard now. Before I couldn't do that because if I tried to lower them at all, um, on the high side especially, um, it would start buzzing or fretting out. So they fixed that up good. Uh, the size of the neck shim, I actually made them measure it just for the purposes of this video. But uh, the size of the neck shim is 2 ths So um, if you decide you wanted to make one, it's 2 ths at one side and 0 at the other as they put it. So, um, that's something to keep in mind. A um, couple other things. Um, let's see here. Oh, I had to measure the action. Um, the action is 4 64ths on the low E and um, 3 64ths on the high E. So let's see if you can see how low that is. Now, when they set it up, they actually took the springs out of the bridge pickup and because they couldn't get it high enough. And as you noticed, my uh, if you watched the, the pickup video, you probably heard about my struggles with treble. So I have no issue with the fact that they did that. So, um, yeah, they raised it right up there. And I'm guessing that there's not much of an issue with uh, string pull and magnetism with the, with the noiseless pickups. Um, so that looks fine and uh, next about just about like it was before but you can see how much lower it is I believe you can probably tell now something else that was an issue with the Harley Benton uh, was the height of the nut and you you probably you may have seen my video my other video about um, adjusting the night the nut height by uh, sanding the back of it um, and remember before I was saying that I wanted to make sure that I left enough for a real tech to work on in case I was able to get it fixed. Well, they definitely fixed it. Um, those issues that I was having with Rocksmith where the, the first and second frets on the low E uh, would be, um, I'd, I'd get marked off when I was playing the mini games because it thought that I was playing the wrong note because the intonation was so bad uh, due to the fact that the nut was too high. So when you're pushing down the note, you're literally bending it at the same time. Well, they definitely fixed that. Take a look at this. That is a low, low nut. I really could not possibly complain about that. That's awesome. So it plays much better down on the low frets. Um, the original nut, the strings, the, the nut slots weren't um, angled. There was no break angle down toward the headstock. They're completely flat and level. So they, uh, they, um, angled those a little bit and they definitely lowered them down a lot and I think they probably took a little bit off the top of the nut too because you remember the strings are supposed to be half in and half out of the nut slot so they definitely did an awesome awesome job with that so you can see there so um yeah so that went well uh, 4 64ths and 3 64ths um, he, uh, they, there was another guy in the shop that was trying to get it lower 
But the older fellow it was explaining to me that, you know, it's physics. <laughs> you can't get it much lower than that. Um, so, you know, if you want to be able to dig in at all and bend the notes. So it's, you know, slightly lower than a Fender, but, you know. And it's fine. It plays great. Basically what I said, uh, they actually had a, a, an acronym for it. Um, I think it was uh, ALWOB. And he, he said it's as low as possible without buzzing. <laughs> so they um, they got it as low as they could get it without buzzing. And, you know, and it's perfect. I really couldn't complain about it if I wanted to, um, especially after Guitar Center, you know, sending me away <laughs> and saying that they, that they didn't want my money, essentially. Um, and I didn't even know if I was going to drop it off there. I just wanted to hear what they had to say. So I would say if you have that same issue with the, with the nut, well, I'm sorry, with the uh, bridge saddles, which you pretty much have to, unless they've actually started giving them decent setups at Tom Ann, uh, which, like I said before, you can't blame them. It's a $145 guitar. Uh, I don't hate on them. Um, though I'd have to say... I've never had them respond to a single email that I've sent them, you know, asking about stuff when I told them that I needed to replace the bridge saddles and, you know, uh, you know, or just minor things, but, you know, I've never had them respond to one of my emails, so I actually wanted to ask them how, if they could sell me a replacement control plate, because um, from all the working on it, because I've taken it apart a few times, these screws have gotten a little bit scratched up. And it turns out that when I flip over the control plate on top of the pick guard, these screws, I moved the scratchy ones out of the way, but this one's a good example. But they've been scratching the uh, control plate, which I'm not super stoked about. Uh, so I'm going to try to email Tom in and see if they'll sell me a replacement, because apparently Telecaster control plates are all different. And especially since this is you know an Asian-made guitar, it doesn't follow any standard, really. Um, so... You can't just buy a control plate off the shelf and slap it on there. Plus, that one's really thick steel. I think the Fender ones are more of a thin, kind of coppery kind of um, material. Not that it matters, but it's nice having it nice and sturdy since I have worked on it a lot. I guess it's pretty much done now, so I won't be taking it apart much more. But um, another thing about the pickguard screws, uh, the folks at the guitar shop I took it to were nice enough to give me a whole set to put on the guitar because of me, I was telling them about them being scratched up because of me taking it apart. And uh, actually the Fender uh, pickguard screws, when he said they were actually Fender screws, the heads are smaller. So when I went to try to put some of them in, you could sort of see some of the countersink hole around it and even some of the white, because remember this is actually a three-ply pickguard. So I was like, no, 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 I'll take my scratchy screws and put them right back in, which I did. Um, so... If you get a pickguard made, you might want to consider not having the countersink holes done or um, making sure that all the screw holes line up really well. Um, and it's not it's nobody's fault. It's, I mean, Tom M designed it this way. When you look at the pickguard over the guitar, um, when you look at the pickguard over the guitar, you can see that the screw holes aren't perfectly lined up. So that's, you know, that's just how it is. But, um... Anyway, just wanted to mention the thing about the uh, the size of the screw heads because that is definitely something to note. Um, but hopefully you won't scratch up your screws or scratch up your plate. Just be careful. Be more careful than I was. So learn from my mistakes. That's, these, that's what these videos are for. Um, so anyway, I talked about the shim. Um, I talked about the nut. Um, the neck, and I'm not sure if they did any fretwork on it or not, honestly. I mean, I would assume so. But they said that if there were any fret issues, they would just fix a fret or two as part of the setup. They weren't going to charge me any extra for that. Um, they replaced the bridge height adjustment um, screws on the on the saddles uh, because the ones that remember you may remember I got the Mexican Telecaster uh, bridge plate and took the saddles off and put them on here. Um, which they were an improvement, but the screws are very loose. So when you when you destring the guitar to uh, change the strings, they'll just randomly move around on their own and change height, or one side will be lower than the than the other side um, on the same saddle. So they swapped out my screws for me. Um, if you do decide to get new bridge plate or new uh, bridge saddles, you might want to check and see. I still have the old ones. You might want to check and see if the uh, if the height adjustment screws are the same size 
and if they are, they might be firmer, you know, or less loose. Um, I actually took these with me to the guitar shop, and I was like, well, you can take my old screws out. They're like, oh, we have boxes and boxes of screws. We'll replace them for you, no problem. So I never really got to find out if they actually fit, and I'm obviously not going to mess with it now. Now that it's all set up. And these are the, the fender screws I was telling you about. Um, I don't know if I want to try to get into a Ziploc bag one-handed. Let's see how dexterous I really am. Uh-oh, I did it. So, these are the fender screws. If you look here, you can probably see that they're not exactly the same size. So, just something to be aware of. Okay, so I said I was going to talk about the construction quality a little bit. Um, but like I said before, for the price, these are great guitars. Um, definitely can't complain. A um, couple things, though. Um, for one thing, I wish I, I wish I brought it upstairs with me, but the, the pad here on, under the um, strap button is actually like a hard plastic washer. It's like a clear washer. So where I swapped out the strap locks, I just took the felt pads that came with it and put them in there. But that's definitely one place where they uh, they skimp on the cost a little bit. Um, my strap button was crooked. It was actually at angled upward like this. Um, I actually had to unscrew it. And um, I tried to screw it back in straight, but this wood's so hard, I had to actually drill a second hole next to the strap button. And I actually broke off the drill bit because the wood's so hard and because I wasn't giving, I wasn't stop taking breaks enough and then letting the, the, the drilled up wood out. You have to kind of clean the bit a lot uh, and make sure it doesn't get built up. But I didn't. So I snapped a bit off in there. But fortunately, uh, the, I drilled another hole that was close enough to it so that I could cover it up <laughs> with the strap button. And on the other side, um, they don't ever seem to be able to center the strap button. Uh, in this case, it was sort of half in and half out of the walnut, so I did the same thing and uh, drilled a new hole and didn't break off a drill bit this time. And this is right after the guitar came out of the box, because that's how, that's how uh, um, OCD I guess I am about these things. But yeah, I like, was drilling on it within like an hour of taking it out. But um, I drilled another hole in the center of the walnut and remounted the strap button and it's fine. But um, there's definitely little things about it. Um, I mean, there's good things, too. It's definitely definitely more good than bad, for sure. But just things that I wanted to mention. Uh, the ferrules, I guess that's how you say it, the little thingers here, they're not actually even. I don't know if you can see that. But they sort of just, I think they just use a big-ass hand drill um, and drill a hole through them. And um, you'll notice, I think it's the G-string is slightly higher. It's not a big deal, but some people think they're going to buy these guitars and mod them and put different, you know, parts on them and stuff, which I guess you probably could do. But um, they're definitely, consistency-wise, you can tell that it was made by some people, which I think, you know, kind of gives it, it gives it charm, but some people don't feel quite the same way. So <laughs> thought I'd point that out, too. Um, also, the back. I've seen ones that are made out of two pieces. I've seen ones that are made out of three pieces. This one, I believe, is five pieces. There's one here. You can see where the seam is. And it picks up right here. And then there's um, this one here. And then I believe this is its own piece. And then this whole side is one piece. But... If you look at it at an angle, it might be a little bit easier to see the seams. But super heavy ash, super duper heavy ash. Um, but sounds good, works well. Um, the maple, um, they call it a top. Uh, apparently, there's some uh, debate online about what's a top and what's a veneer. But it's definitely not very thick at all. Um, I don't think it probably makes much difference even if it was. Uh, I guess you'd have to ask some Les Paul experts about that. But, um, yeah, so. But it's still a nice guitar. I definitely don't have any complaints about it. Um, you know, the, um, the setup went pretty well. It, you know, it plays perfect. I definitely, 
couldn't ask for anything more as far as the way that it plays. Um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. Um, I still have the uh, other pick guard coming. Um, there's still uh, the, uh, there's still another piece of this material that's at the uh, sign shop, um, waiting to get a QED, the you know the the engraving place. Um, there's still another piece waiting to get cut. I'm just trying to get the uh, shape for the pick guard perfected. So remember I was talking about how it's a little bit short here as far as being symmetrical, and it comes in a little bit too come comes in toward this way a little bit too far should kind of swoop in a little bit more. It's not a big deal, but I figured um, since I had another piece and I already, I don't have to pay for it or anything, so uh, this particular piece uh, that they're cutting, they're doing as a favor for me. So, um, you know, I figured I might as well try to get the design perfect so I can put it up for other folks, but it's taken much longer than I expected it to, and I'm about ready to just give up and say screw it and have them cut me a new one. They did redo the horn, but this part they didn't mess with. So I'm thinking about just taking it the way it is, but um, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, there may be one more video. This might be the last one. Um, if it is, uh, I definitely appreciate you watching. And, you know, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to post them in the comments, and I would be happy to answer. Thanks.